Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm back for some more Mortal Kombat. So, in my previous video, I was talking about, like, the music for Mortal Kombat and how it's going to, like, be improving in Mortal Kombat 1. And after talking about it, I wanted to go back just to talk about Mortal Kombat 9's music because I wanted to also do a, talk about it a bit more. So, I thought I could do a tier list so I can talk about all the tracks and show y'all how good the uh, the tracks were for this game. So I'm not gonna like say all, any are like fully bad because I made sure that they're all good. So I made I went I did flawless, great, good, it's all right, and decent. So without further ado, let's go into it. We're gonna start off with the armory. What I love is how it goes from like this simple like working area where like you just hear this like simple working noises and then you just hear like the music really kick in. That's probably that's probably one of the sickest introductions for the music yet. So that's we're already starting off good. So I'm putting that in flawless. So up next is the bell tower. It sounds like, it sounds very ominous, at the very least, because no, there was only, the, my problem for, like, the stage for, like, in the story, though, was, um, you, you only got to do, I think, two fights, and that was it. This stage was only used for two fights in the story, because you fought the, both Shokans and Ermac, as well as, I... I didn't really fight here as much, because mainly the bell tower, I think, it honestly, for me, looked a lot better in 3, in my opinion, mainly because, like, you can also see the outside, because, like, let me also pull up a picture of, like, the bell tower in MK3, so, uh, hold on a second, because, let me show off the MK3 bell tower, yeah, because, like, if you look here, I also think there was, like, another outside part, but, uh, hold on, Oh my gosh, I really have to like zoom in on this one. Uh, but yeah, look, if you see right here, you can see that uh, you can like see like the top of the tower as well as the outside, which makes it a bit more interesting, especially when I was fighting Nightwolf for, for the first time on this stage. So uh, I'm going to say um, I'll put it in good. I'll say it very, I'm going to say it's, it's all right. It's all right. I'm going to say it's all right. All right, next is the courtyard. I lo I love how I like the ongoing beat that's going on there. It it really me it really gets you into the groove that the fight's going down. I especially love it because... So, I'm, I'm gonna bring this up for a lot of the other scenes, but the way they were also able to time the music in the actual story mode. So, we're gonna put it in great. I think that that's great. Alright, next is the courtyard at night. It, it really, it kind of gives me, like, the Avatar vibes for when they were, like, fighting against Zuko in a way. When, I mean, it, gets, it gives me those kinds of vibes as well as, look, the tournament just started. And, again, going back to how it cu cuts in for 
the game. Here, I love it for how it cuts in for this fight with Baraka. He just jumps in. And boom, he shows off the blades. Uh, so I'll say I'll put it in front of... I think I'll say I'll put it in front of the courtyard at day. Alright, now for the Deadpool. I like the bell ringing in in the background of it cuz it makes me think of the uh the change that you're seeing on the on the stage. It makes me th it, remind, it makes me think of those like you're just hearing those just like clink together and they're like slowly being um just slowly going down dro dropping bodies into the cesspool. It's making me think of that as well as like you're it gives off the vibe that you're in the trenches. And you're and they're just you're being disposed of. I'm liking that feel of it. So, I'll I'll say hmm, I it's I, was, I think I'll put in good. I'll put in in good. All right, now for the desert. Now, honestly, for me, when I hear a desert themed music or anything that's like surrounding a desert, the only time I like it is I think for when it's like the Gerudo theme. Honestly, because like that's the only way you'll get me to like a desert level. Oh! That sounded a lot better than I remembered. Oh my gosh. Especially for how it gets way more dramatic. It, it felt definitely a lot more dramatic, but like in a good way, because it's the way the way the stage looks is just abandoned and just in the middle of a desert. As well as you're just seeing Cyrax just be, um, struggling in the sand about to die. It's <laughs> like this is it's like this place is no playground you want to be near at all so i will i'll i'll always, i'll put it up there i'll put it in front of the uh courtyard um, i'll put it in between co the courtyards hold on nope okay there we go now for the evil monastery Now, I know I I'm I'm only I know I might be only saying this because of the chapter that you play this in, but it does give off like the Shaolin monk vibes just for how um this was one of the stages like you'd and like you've had for when you were with Kung Lao and Liu Kang. But as well as the scenery, I cuz I love the scenery a lot in the stage cuz I I love the uh I like the sorcerer in the middle. I like the uh I like the tower out outside as well as the mountaintop as well as like all the skulls like look at all the skulls that you got hanging around this monastery so all of that just looks very <laughs> scary i'm liking that feel of it so i think that one i'll actually put up in front of the uh i'll put that in front of the uh the courtyard sweet where's the monastery 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 there it is i'll put it in front that's at the top of all right now for the flesh pits
I'm not sure if anyone else hears it, but they're like, there's a slight techno vibe I hear when listening to the stage. Like, you're just hearing, like, um, soft beats in a way. Like, you're seeing, you're, like, hearing, like, a slight dubstep in the background. That's what I'm slightly hearing because, like, it's meant to be a lab where, like, these experiments are being conducted in. So I think that's what it's trying. That was what it was trying to do, but I I do like it though. I do um I am impressed by how it sounded. So um I'll put it yeah I'll put it in front of the uh in front of the first courtyard or er, I'll put it in good. I'll put it in good. All right, we enter Goro's lair. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely, it's it, this is meant to be very intimidating to the player because you now you've entered the layer of the champion of Mortal Kombat. You you have no way of knowing that you're going to make it out alive, and your only way out is by fighting the forearm Shokan that waits before you. But sadly, is becomes a jobber in the story mode. <laughs> I, I don't know why I added that last line, but yes, Goro's Lair up there. I'm, this one I think definitely deserve, deserves to be in Flawless. Honestly, it doesn't, it feels like it should be much more intense, personally, because if you don't know, the Soul NATO has just been made, and it's about to, like, absorb all the souls of Earthrealm, and you got that dragon that's, like, all the way in the background just destroying the city, so it honestly feels like it should be a bit more intense. In my opinion, it feels like it needs more, much more intensity, but it feel it does still have like a bit of a spooky feel. So I'll uh, I'll at least put it in. It's all right. It's it's all right. All right, we're now in the Nether Realm. Let's hear this one. I love the I love the opening for this one especially. Okay, I'm used to like hearing like that opening a lot mainly because of uh, the fight that you have with Scorpion and Sub-Zero in Scorpion's chapter where he's saying this is where I was reborn and this is where I will complete your my vengeance I think it was I'm not I don't I don't think it's worth playing the clip but still the the intensity though is there for it because like this is like the underworld and it's meant to be very very intense on where you're at because like look at this you got like this three-headed cerberus in the background you got people being burned alive and, and i just realized there's also like hands sticking out of the lava oh my gosh i never in i'm now realizing how, how insane this stage was oh my goodness <laughs> so yeah i don't let's i'll put it up there i'll put it in uh i'll put it in front of the evil monastery All right now for the coliseum
I didn't even realize there was a course for this. Okay, this gets extra points, especially since this is also meant to be the final stage and where you're you're taking on Shao Kahn. So this that is definitely flawless. I that, that I definitely see being a flawless track. So that that goes. I'll put that in front of Goro. Now for the Living Forest. I love this one so much because I, I want I after I started to hear it a few more times. I, I love the flute starting. I love how the flute just opens up with it. Oh, I uh, I put it up there. So I'll. This is like another one that I think deserves flawless. All right. So let's see what's next. Oh! I like the addition of the drums. That that i got me to like it much more. Oh, all right. So definitely the pits. Oh, uh, there's three pits. Uh, I'll put go with the one during the day just because it has the meteors. I'll put it um at the end. So there we go. Okay, they were cooking with that one. They were definitely cooking with the rooftop. Because th there's like a lot of transitions on like the music here. Because like you have this part right here. And then right here, I'd say. Yeah, right here. And then lastly, right here. Hold on. The different, the different transitions got me going. So that one I'm putting right in front of the living forest. Now for the rooftop uh, during dusk, or I guess when uh, Shao Kahn's about to enter Earth Realm. Okay, right when we get like, I'd say halfway into the song, that's when it starts to like truly hit. So I'm liking that much more than like the first half. So like the first half they didn't have me, but like the second half, that's when it started to like catch on. Cause I was hoping to like hear a bit more cause, cause this is also supposed to be like your final fight for when Shao Kahn is about to enter Earth Realm. So I'll, uh, let's see, I will um it's a bit slow but it's still good so it takes a while to kick in though so i'll at least put it in good all right next is shao khan's throne room let's hear it okay
There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'd say this one's pretty good. Right here, it definitely starts to get a bit more interesting. Because I, this is this is also like a personal favorite of mine for like one of the stages. Because I love the design for like the throne that Shao Kahn has, as well as like you got this like pet he has. I don't even know what that is. It's like look, it's got four eyes. It's also got like spikes. What was this pet he, Shao Kahn had? But uh, I will put it. I'd say it's I I'd say it's like all right. It's like definitely better than the bell tower. Right. Now for the soul chamber. Yeah, I'd say it's another one that's all right, but honestly, it's one of the best looking stages though because you have like the the soul area, you have like the soul chamber right there. Then you got like the two glowing eyes and then you just have like these weird tentacles that are just like right next to the chamber itself. It's like it's one of the most insane looking and best and desi best designed stages they've made. So, and I I personally like it way more than the soul chamber in MK11, so I'll uh, I'd say it's all right. It's another all right. All right, now for the street. Yeah, I'd say this one's, like, another one that, like, actually, that fits the situation. It definitely does, because, like, you just have, like, all this crazy stuff happening um, in the uh, area. Like, the whole city is being destroyed. You got this, like, boat that's on fire. You have this, like, giant... I don't even know what that is. It's, like, some crazy outworld demon that's just, like, attacking, like, the bridge. And then, also, in the background, you would also see Motaro fighting Johnny K. Or, no, wait, that was for, like, that one story portion, and that was it. But... Overall, I'd say, eh, I, I, I think I'd say I'll just at least put it behind, out in front of the bell tower as well. Oh my, and I've been waiting for this one. Here we go. Flawless, definitely flawless, flawless, top of the board, top of the board, where is it, where is it, right here, flawless, just straight up flawless, and I have another reason as to why it's flawless, and that is because of the story part is portion of it as well. Alright, now for the temple. I like the chorus for it a lot. The chorus definitely uh, amplifies it a lot more because it's supposed to be this church-like area, and it's like giving off the vi the vibe that like there's a ritual that's about to take place, which looks like happens in the stage. Because like if you um, see it when the stage is actually happening, there's like a priest that's on the table who's like I he was conducting like some sort of ritual. It looks like 
So, it's def that one is a lot better than the last few we've heard. So, I'll put it in front of the evil monastery. Alright, last one. The Wastelands. Not expecting that last one to go so hard. What? Oh my gosh. That, that, I was, the, the way that transitioned was sick. There was like so much more happening than I thought. Oh my god. Okay, so that is definitely up there. So I'll, I'll definitely put that in front of like the pit dur at, during the day or, yeah, that the pit because like I forgot I made the pit just like a singular. Wait. Did I miss Shang Tsung's pet? I thought I got Shang Tsung's throne room. Okay, I guess I missed uh, Shang Tsung's throne room, but anywho, here it is. This part has always been my favorite for hearing that part of the song. Yeah, that it really recaptures like like you hearing the the throne room for the first time. It really reimagines the original for the uh from MK1. So I'll also put that up in flawless. I'll put that uh Okay, so we have like three. Oh gosh, we have three different like thrones. Uh, I'll uh, I'll put it in. Yeah, I'm gonna put it behind Goro. I'm gonna put it behind Goro. I think that's fair. Just when I think I'm done, there's a, just one more bar right in front of me. Okay, so we also need the uh, we need the garden, which was also like the original original stage in MK9. So let's hear this one. The strings really hit this one for me. I'm really liking the strings on this one especially. That one, I, it's definitely up there for me. Especially because of how this one is well designed. Because like you have like the normal, like the small patio. You got the Goro statue. You got the uh, Shang Tsung's throne, uh, temple up in the background. And I'm not sure if that's the pit. No, nah, I don't think that's the pit. But uh, I'll, let's see. I will... Yeah, I'll put it in right behind the Nether Realm. And there you have it. That's all the stages I've ranked. So, oh, sorry. Let me uh just move it a little. So yeah, you have flawless, great, good, and it's all right. So yeah, a lot of great tracks in this, and hopefully we should see bangers like this for when MK1 drops. So let me know how y'all would rank this. Let me know if there's any picks that you weren't satisfied with. And be sure to like and subscribe for more Mortal Kombat content. And I thank y'all for watching. And I shall see y'all soon.